This week at Starbase, while construction continues on Pad B, along with its supporting propellant handling and deluge systems, Ship 36 is lost during testing at the Massey Outpost. How will this impact the schedule for future flights, and what kind of damage was sustained to the surrounding infrastructure? Let's dig into this week's update and take a closer look. On Tuesday afternoon, a vacuum raptor was spotted being moved into Megabay 2 for installation on Ship 37 as crews worked to prepare the vehicle for its static fire campaign following its successful cryogenic proofing. Moving on to this week's construction updates, a load of rebar cages were delivered to the build site on Thursday as crews worked to drill and install new structural piles to support the forthcoming Gigabay. Moving down the highway to the launch site, the tank farm expansion also saw steady work this week. On Monday, new ship supply and return piping was installed on the methane side of the farm. There was also a lot of activity with the vertical vaporizers that have been installed and removed multiple times in the recent months. This week, the two new vaporizers were delivered and installed. Unlike their predecessors, these had steel X cross braces installed up and down all four sides, presumably to help better protect their relatively fragile cooling fins during future launch operations. Another vaporizer was also removed and taken away, presumably to receive its own bracing. Over at Pad B on Monday, the chopsticks were raised part way up the tower. With the arms out of the way, a crane then lifted the fourth manifold for the water-cooled steel deck on the top of the new launch mount. A few hours later though, the manifold was removed. Shortly after midnight, whatever issue crews had encountered was taken care of and the manifold was moved into position and installed. Early this week, the ship static fire stand was brought over to Mega Bay 2 and on Sunday morning, Ship 36 was transferred onto it. And just a short time later, the ship was rolled out of the building through the Sanchez site and onto Highway 4 heading for the Massey outpost. A few hours later, the rocket arrived and was moved into position over the site's flame trench. Late that night, its aft flaps were actuated in preparation for its upcoming static fire campaign. Later on Monday, Booster 16's hot staging ring was brought out of Star Factory and moved over to Mega Bay 1. The article was briefly brought back into the ring yard before eventually going back inside for installation. Meanwhile, down at the Massey outpost, the tank farm began spooling up for testing. Propellant was then loaded onto Ship 36. Shortly before 2 that afternoon, the Starship performed a single-engine static fire demonstrating an in-space relight like would be used for a deorbit burn. And late on Wednesday night, propellant load began again on Ship 36, this time in preparation for a full six-engine static fire. Unfortunately, just after 11 o'clock, while still loading propellant, there was a major anomaly that resulted in the explosive destruction of Starship. We could see that the failure started near the nose in the payload section of the vehicle, with it essentially unzipping from the nose down to the forward dome. We later learned there was a likely failure of one of the nitrogen composite overwrap pressure vessels in the nose. This likely caused a failure in the rocket's header tanks located in the tip of the nose. That failure led to the propellants mixing with an explosive outcome. As the dominoes continued to fall, the main methane tank would have ruptured leading the secondary explosion. Fires continued to burn throughout the night and into the next day. Looking at the site in daylight, we could see that the damage to the site's infrastructure was significant, with the ground support gantry no longer standing next to the now empty static fire stand. While failure is nothing new to the Starship program due to SpaceX's iterative approach to development, regardless of cause, the loss of the vehicle during a routine static fire is significant, especially in respect to the damage to the infrastructure. It will likely take SpaceX months to clean up and refurbish the site to be able to static fire a ship again to ensure it's ready for launch. On Thursday, Booster 16's hot stage adapter was brought back out of Mega Bay 2 and returned to the Star Factory. This is likely a result of the delay to the launch schedule due to the anomaly the night before. And switching over to Florida, late Friday morning, the Starlink Group 12-26 mission launched from Space Launch Complex 40, sending another 23 satellites to orbit and completing the deployment of the first generation of Starlink satellites with direct-to-cell capabilities. Both fairing halves and Booster 1078 returned to port two days later for processing and refurbishment. Early on Wednesday morning, another 28 Starlink satellites were also sent to orbit as the Group 10-8 mission successfully lifted off from the same launch pad. 
And meanwhile, despite some uncertainty regarding the long-term future of the Artemis program, construction of the Mobile Launcher 2 platform continues with another prefabricated module of the structure being lifted for installation on Thursday morning. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.